Shalom, family. This is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And I want to speak to you on the topic. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Family, we know we live in, in a time where there's many false Christs being preached and taught out into the atmosphere. Many different messages, many different gospels, meaning messages. And the title of the teaching is clearly saying, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this teaching. And it's my prayer that someone will be able to gain some knowledge and understanding and just be richly edified with the oracles of Yahweh. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this teaching. Once again, this is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. So we're going to start at the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 4. He says, Hear, O Israel, the spirit of, spirit of God, our God, is one spirit. He's our God, and he is one spirit. Hebrews chapter 12. And we'll hit verses 1 and 2. He says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about, with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which do so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto salvation, the author and finisher of our faith. For who the joy, the wisdom that was set before him endured the cross. He endured his suffering unto death, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. He set down at his power. That's what's going on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verses 4 through 8. It says, give me wisdom that sit it by thy throne. This same wisdom, this same salvation, the anointed one, Christ, Jehovah, give me wisdom that sit it by thy throne and reject me not from among thy children. For I, thy servant and son of thine handmaid, am a feeble person and of a short time. And too young for the understanding of judgment and laws. For though a man be never so perfect among the children of men, yet if thy wisdom be not with him, he shall be nothing regarded. Thou hast chosen me. To be a king of thy people and a teacher of thy sons and daughters. Thou hast commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount. In an altar in the city, in the nation, in the people wherein thou dwellest. A resemblance of the holy Tabernacle, which thou hast prepared from the beginning. The book of Tobit, chapter 13 and verse 10. He says, give praise to the creator, for he is good. And praise the everlasting king, that his tabernacle may be built in thee. His temple may be built in thee. His spirit may be built in thee. Again, with joy, with wisdom. And let him make joyful there 
indeed those that are captives and love indeed forever those that are miserable the ones that don't know this truth the ones that is lost the ones that this word is hid from first peter chapter 2 and verse 5 through 10 he says, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Yahweh by salvation, the anointed one, Yahweh Shadow Messiah. Wherefore, also, it is contained in the scripture. Behold, remember, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, wherein too also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation. O house of Israel, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should so show forth the praises, the confessions of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of Yahweh, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So he's being very specific. First Samuel chapter two, verses nine and 10. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Spirit of God shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Spirit of God shall judge the ends of the earth. And he shall give strength unto his king. And exalt the horn, meaning the lineage the heritage of his anointed. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 14 down 18. He says, Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. By me, kings ring. And princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the teachers of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 9 through 12. And wisdom was with thee, which knoweth thy works, and was present when thou madest the world, and knew what was acceptable in thy sight, and right in thy commandments. Oh, send her out of thy holy heavens and from the throne of thy glory 
that being present, she may labor with me, that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. For she know it and understand it all things. And she shall lead me soberly in my doings and preserve me in her power. So shall my works be acceptable. And then shall I teach thy people righteously and be worthy to sit in my father's seat. Second Corinthians. Chapter four, verses one through four. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy. We faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of Yahweh deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of Yahweh. But if our gospel, meaning what? Our message be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world, Satan, that old devil, the God of this world, have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, the message of Christ, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. See, this is what it should be doing because when we go over here to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 8, he tells us the creator sent a word into Jacob and it have lighted upon Israel. He's telling us something that it have already done, family. So this is why he's telling us But if our message be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. You all, you try to share this truth. You try to share this knowledge with your brothers and sisters, and they don't want to hear it. They don't want to receive you. They want to receive the words, the oracles, the precepts that you're giving them. He said, it is hid to them that are lost. Because we look here in Matthew chapter 13 and we start at verse 15. He said, for this people heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing. In their eyes, they're understanding they have clothes, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. This is what he's telling us, family. This is what he will do for these ones that are lost. He say, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious message of Christ, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. The God of this world, he's operating in the people of this world. Job 9 and 24, he said, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, is given into the God of this world, Satan. He covered the understandings of the teachers thereof. If not, where and who is he? 
Ephesians. Chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You're wrestling against Satan and his workers. The old ancient and honorable. This is who we wrestling against. Matter of fact, we'll show him to you. Isaiah chapter 9 and we we'll hit verse 15 and 16. He said, ancient and honorable, he is the head, Satan. And the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. And they that are led of them are destroyed. This is what we're wrestling against, family. Not wrestling against flesh and blood. He said, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In other words, the God of this world, which have blinded the minds of them which believe not. This is what we are wrestling with. The book of Luke. Chapter four, verse five through eight. He says, and the devil taking him up, talking about Yahweh into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power, what I give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. See family, he said a whole lot right there. And I think it just went over a whole lot of folks head. See, when we think and we measure ourselves by the, the standards of having material things and being able to, to reach high standards and uh, statues in this world. We think we're getting it by our own merit and our own craft and, and our own doing. And the devil sitting there saying, all I need you to do is worship me. He said, all this power will I give thee. We just saw in Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So he has the power of this world, this earth, this world, the God of this world. All this power. All these possessions and these accolades and all of these things that make people bubbly on the inside. How many followers they have on social media? How many vehicles and homes and private jets and suits and how many exotic trips and vacations you can take? Exotic meals. The, the thinking of measuring yourself to your worldly possession and your worldly accomplishments. This is how a lot of people measure themselves. Always trying to Try out the next best thing and do the next biggest thing to outdo your sister or your brother instead of just being content where you are and what you have and how he made you. 
You want to get a, a new booty. You want to get new lips. You want to get uh, new facials. You want to get a new nose. You want to do all of these things so you can feel validated by the standards of the world. He said, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, all of the fame that comes along with it, I'm going to give it to you. Why you see all of these rappers, they just got all this money and they just throwing it at the feet of people. They got all these cars, they got to show their houses, they got to do all of these things so they can feel validated by the world's measuring stick. Some of them, when they realize they done destroyed their whole life, they would even tell you how they sold their soul. They did these ungodly acts to get where they at. These actors, they had to put on a dress. They had to do this. They had to do that in order to, to get this fame and this glory. Even these athletes, they got commercials where they got on skirts and wigs. They being uh, buffooning and cooning to have this social status of the world. He said for that it is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will, I give it. That's what the devil's saying. He said, if thou therefore will worship me, in other words, you give respect unto me, all shall be thine. And Yahweh answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shall worship, thou shall give respect to the creator, thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Him only shall we give respect to. This is the same mindset that we should have. Stop trying to measure yourself by reality, show, reality shows. The housewives and 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 all of these uh, couple shows. This is not real. This is not reality. Be content with who the Most High made you to be. So when we go back over here to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I just want to emphasize this one more time in verse 3. He said, but if our gospel, if our message be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. They don't realize what's really going on. The key word is lost. This is who this word is hid from. But he got a warning. He got a message to give us. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 11. He said, for the son of man, meaning the servant of man, is come to save that which was lost. This is what. Christ came to do. If you don't know this truth, he's resting in his messengers to deliver you a message. He's come to save that which was lost. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. Christ speaking, he said, but he answered and said, I am not sent 
but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. They're scattered to the four corners of, of the earth for being disobedient, linking back up with their forefathers of the Chaldeans. And I'm sent to these lost sheep of the house of Israel. Second Corinthians chapter four and, and verse five. He said, for we preach not ourselves, but the anointed one salvation, the creator. And ourselves, your servants for salvation's sake. This is what we are preaching. Sirach. Chapter 24 and verse 8. He says, so the creator of all things gave me a commandment. And he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest and said, let that dwelling be in Jacob and thine inheritance in Israel. See, we're doing this for salvation's sake. Not our own. Let's go back to the verse. Second Corinthians 4 and 5. He's telling us. For we preach not ourselves, but the anointed one, salvation, the creator, and ourselves, your servants, for salvation's sake. This is what we're doing. Romans chapter 9, verse 4 and 5. He said, who are Israelites? To whom pertain it the adoption in the glory, in the covenant, in the giving of the law, in the service of Yahweh, in the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ the anointed one came. Who is over all. Yahweh bless. He gave wisdom, knowledge, and understanding forever. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse six and seven. For Yahweh who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Have shine in our hearts. To give the light, this wisdom of the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh in the face, meaning what? In the understanding of salvation, the anointed one. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of Yahweh and not of us. This is the power source is our heavenly father. Let's show this. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 18 through 19. He says, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name and my way I will require it of him. Not only that, let's hit another one. Exodus chapter 20 
And we are hit uh, oh, Exodus chapter 23. And we hit verse 20 down to 22. He said, Behold, remember, I send a messenger before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my way is in him. But if thou shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemy. And an adversary unto thine adversaries. Jeremiah. This is the most high letting us know. Chapter 3 and verse 15. He said, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. This is their job to feed you. Sirach chapter 49 and verse 7. For they entreated him evil, the one who the Most High sent to them to be a messenger, to feed them with knowledge and understanding. For they entreated him evil, who nevertheless was a prophet, a mouthpiece of God. Sanctified in his mother's womb. That he might root out and afflict and to destroy all false doctrine, all falsities, false Christ. And that he might build up also and plant the knowledge of truth. That's what's going on. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse eight down to 18. And they treated him as evil. And he was a mouthpiece for Yahweh. He said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body that dying of the creator salvation. That the life also of salvation might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death. For salvation's sake, that the life also of salvation might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death working in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith. This desired expectation, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the creator's salvation 
Christ shall raise up us also by salvation and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of Yahweh. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 17. <clears throat> If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of Yahweh. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. These worldly things, these possessions, these accolades all of these desires worldly desires he said for ye are dead and your life is hid with christ in yahweh when christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is our, our, our adultery. For which things say the wrath of Yahweh cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walk some time when ye live in them. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, citizen, born nor free but christ is all and in all put on therefore as the elect of yahweh holy and beloved bowels of mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you so also do ye see these are the things that we should be manifesting in our spirit because we'll pivot for a minute when we go here to 
Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 22, he said, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, intemperance. Against such there is no law. See, these are the things that we should be possessing. They should be in our spirit. This should be the fruits of our spirit. But a lot of us don't want to do these things. We don't want to have a, a humbleness of mind. We don't want to have uh, bowels of mercy and kindness. We don't want to have meekness. We don't want to have long suffering. We don't want to forbear one another. We just want everyone just to get it and not forbear. We don't want to forgive one another when they make a mistake or when they do us wrong. This is something that we have to check ourselves, look within ourselves and check ourselves. He said, if any man have a quarrel against any, not just against you, but against any. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. See, we can accept Christ's forgiveness towards us, but we don't want to return the favor and forgive somebody else when they do us wrong. When they talk about us, when they mistreat us, when they try to cast down our name, just as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. This is what he's telling us, family. He's saying above all these things, Put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of Yahweh rule in your hearts. You don't rule your own heart. You don't rule your own mind. You let the peace of Yahweh rule in your hearts. Something else just came to my mind. Share this. Romans. Chapter 10, let's see what Paul had to say. He said, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. They're wanting to rule their own mind instead of letting the peace of Yahweh rule their mind. He said, just as Christ forgave you, do also ye forgive others. This right here is going to get a whole lot of us on the wrong side of the plumb line when it comes to the most high. Because we too busy trying to rule our own mind. Instead of allowing Christ, the peace of Yahweh rule it. He said they're going about to establish their own righteousness. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. See, a lot of us, we have things mixed up because we think we can play God. 
We think we can do what Yahweh would do. And he's telling us in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 8. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, said the Spirit of God. So don't try to do me. Don't try to replicate me. Learn of my word and obey my voice. He said, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain coming down and the snow from heaven and return it not thither, but water the earth and make it, it bring forth in bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. So in other words, you got some that's going to take hold of his word and, and follow his voice, obey his voice. And you got some that's going to establish their own righteousness but not the righteousness of Yahweh. He said, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So it's going to prosper. It's going to prosper. Romans chapter 9 and verse 6, he said, not as though the word of Yahweh have taken None effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Everyone is not going to obey his word because some of us, this mixed multitude of us, some of us is going about to establish our own righteousness and not the righteousness of Yahweh. He said, neither because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of Yahweh. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Going right back to where we at. How will we know if we're the children of the promise? Start back at verse 12. He said, but he said, put on therefore as the children of the promise, as the elect of Yahweh, which is the children of the promise, holy and beloved, his saints, bowers of mercy, Kindness, humbleness of mind, of spirit, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. This is what we must do. He said, if any man have a quarrel against any He didn't leave none out. Even as Christ, the anointed one, forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of Yahweh rule in your heart. To the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you rich, richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. These confessions of the Most High. Did a teaching a few weeks ago about the song of the Spirit of God. These spiritual songs. Singing and confessing with grace in your hearts to the Creator. And whatsoever ye do, do in word or deed. Do all in the name, in the way of the creator, salvation. Giving thanks to Christ, to Jehovah, Yahweh, Shah, the Messiah, and the Father by him. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. And as we get ready to close, I'll add one more precept in and Micah chapter 6, I believe it is. Let's see. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. He have showed thee, O man, what is good and what do it the Spirit of God require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God thy God so family we see here if our gospel be hid it is here to them that are lost. And he told us that the servant of man is come to save that which was lost. So if this is you, he's calling. Did a teaching a year or two back titled he's calling if you had not seen that you might want to go back and find it because he's calling it's very important that we take heed and hearken to the voice of the most high so he already warned us that his word will not return unto him void and it's going to prosper in the thing that he have sent it. So family, I hope and pray that this message was able to help someone along your journey. I'm going to say a shalom to everyone until we meet again. Shalom.